Scale Vector Graphics images or SVG files can be quite useful on website design because you can blow them up infinitely in size and they will still retain their pristine shape. We compare that to rasterized images when you blow them up to an absurd size, in this case 1500%, they go completely pixelated. Whereas if I blow up the SVG file to the same sort of size, it is still pristine in shape. Now that is because we're using a canvas with drawing points on it. So it is then up to the browser or image viewer to draw it out using the points that we're providing in the files. Now that can make for quite a small file compared to a rasterized image, but in this case we have a 1.4 kilobyte rasterized file compared to a 3.5 kilobyte scaled vector graphics image. So why would I want to use it? Well, there is a way of optimizing and minifying the SVGs so it can turn out a lot smaller. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do it by hand. Now I'm fully aware that tools like SVGO exist, which will do a lot of the optimization for you. Now let's just put this file in to see what we can do. Now without changing any of the settings here, we can see I can get it down to 353 bytes, which is now smaller than the rasterized PNG file. But there are ways of reducing the image further if you understand what to do. Let's start with the image I've been looking at. So open it in a text editor, use your text editor of choice. I'm using Kate here in Linux. What you'll notice is that's readable. Now you may not understand what any of that means, but you can read it using a text editor. And now that is completely different to rasterized images, which you can't read in a text editor. So yeah, they're made up of XML files. Now what you can do is take out parts of this file which have no relevance to the browser. Now a lot of this here is relevant to Inkscape. It has no bearing in how I would look at it in the browser. I mean, would I be caring about how I would export the file in the browser, for example? No, I would not. Would I be caring about the window height and window width? No. So yeah, let's take a look at what we can remove. Now, fun fact with Inkscape, it used to be called Sodipodi. Actually, it was forked from Sodipodi back in 2004, I think it was. So that's where that name comes from. So starting with the header, the XML header. Well, I don't need to say that it's standalone, but I do need to declare a version of XML and we can declare an encoding of UTF-8. So that's just ASCII characters, characters which I can type on a British or American keyboard. Although I was just thinking what would happen if you're using emojis or an extended character set font in Inkscape, so you might need a UTF-16 or 32. So trying to paste that into the actual text box though, it's not coming out as an emoji, so presumably they're going with the UTF-8 character set. That line there is a comment, so I don't need that. You can take out those spaces. And now we come on to the SVG header. So let's take a look at some of the information in that. One section we will need is this XMLNS line with W3Org 2000 SVG. So I can select that, which is that line there. So everything else we don't need. So I can get rid of a lot of those other declarations. There is one item that might be useful if you have elements in the file which are clickable. And I don't just mean the entire image is clickable, but rather that sections of it are clickable and go to different parts of a website or do something else. An example of that is actually if you're using like the Google material icons. If we have a look at the header there, you can see they've included it. It's not needed if you're having the entire image being clickable. It's only sections. So yeah, I don't require that. So I'm going to drop that. I will declare the version, but that's more for backwards compatibility. And now we come on to the height and width. Now these aren't always needed. Again, depends how you're using the image, but you can control the image size with a canvas box or a view box. But if you're doing that, you need another way of actually controlling the image size, and you would do that for using a CSS file. For example, under the IMG tag, you would declare its width. In this case, I've taken one rem as being its width. 
But you can also do the image size in pixels, for example, 55 pixels. But if you're not doing that, then you will need to declare the width and height in the SVG file. But try it out and see what happens for how you're using it. Now that's it, that's all we need in the SVG tag. And in fact, that's about all we need out of this entire header because this is all information for Inkscape. But I will point out if you're using an SVG file directly within a HTML file that is embedded in the file, then your header can be as simple as specifying the width, the height, and the view box. And you don't need the doc type because that is handled by the parent file or the parent doc type, which is HTML. But personally, I think this is a very poor way of inserting SVG files into a web page. I would rather use them as a separate image or embed them within the CSS file because there's going to be no caching at this point. Browsers won't really cache the HTML files, but they will cache CSS and they will cache images. And then we have metadata, which isn't necessary either. And now we're down to the actual image which starts here with a group, a G. Now, if I look further at the image, we have lots of these numbers with various levels of decimal places. Those decimal places may not be strictly necessary because after all, I'm viewing a 64 pixel image. Does it really matter if I have, well, what's this? 0.2 to, oh, now that's eight decimal places. Am I gonna see eight decimal places of accuracy? Probably not. In fact, there is actually advice here on the number of decimal places you can actually use. And O'Reilly is suggesting here that for reliable results, cross-browser use numbers of no more than two digits after the decimal and four digits before it. So that gives you an idea. You should aim for two decimal places. I would say two or three decimal places would be good enough. And you can actually understand the impact of what would happen if you do optimize it too much or reduce the number of decimal places too much. And I'll leave links to these resources in the video description. So take, for example, this image of a kiwi, nice and smooth and rounded. They've done experiments on the precision and noted the resultant file size. But how does it actually look? Well, there's an example of it there that the military They've actually reduced it so much that the kiwi has become very jagged. Or even in that case, reduced it so much you can no longer see its eye. But that is quite a hefty drop in the file size, and that they've done to the smaller files. That's something to bear in mind. And when you're working on your images, perhaps there's alternate elements which you can use. For example, if you have a circle in Inkscape, I believe that by default it is actually an ellipse. So you're declaring a radius on the x-axis and the y-axis. Whereas alternatively, you can use a circle and just have a single radius. So by doing that, you're gonna lose those few bytes. And that's just for one element. But let's go back to my image. So what can I get rid of here? Well, I don't need to know about the layering, so I can get rid of that group it's in, in its entirety. Now onto the next group. Well, I don't need the ID of it, I'll get rid of that. But we do have a transform here, and that's a matrix transform. Now what does that do? Well, there's a whole load of maths behind it, which I actually don't understand. And uh, I think that's a little bit beyond me. But by actually removing the element, I have actually understood it's to do with rotation. So I'm gonna reduce the number of decimal places in this rotation. So I'll just take that down to three decimal places. Now there's a style element to this and an opacity. Now fill opacity of one is assumed, so that's not required. In fact, because I'm referring to one style change here, I can actually write this differently. So you can actually write it like that instead. Now we come on to the actual drawing, which is a single path. So I don't need to know its ID. But we can go straight on to the path drawing. So path data equals and all of this. So I'm going to leave the decimal places here at the moment. And I'm just going to get to the point where I can finish that path off. So we don't need Inkscape connector curvature. That's not required. And 
you'll notice I've also got a fill here as well, so I don't need that either. I've already declared it in the group above. Oh, I've deleted too much. In fact, it should end like that, being a single XML element. Now, as far as the rest of this goes, that is just junk that Inkscape has left behind. So that can go. And we just get to the point of finishing this group off. So that is what I've gone and done. And if I go and save the file, we'll see what the effect is. So we've gone from three and a half kilobyte. So we've gone from three and a half kilobytes down to 693 bytes. Can you see what the difference is? Now, if I take a look at what we can do with SVGO, I'll download that because it says 367 bytes. Looking at SVGO's output, they've optimized it a lot further. So they've removed the transform matrix. They've got rid of that and they've reduced the number of decimal places to two decimal places. But they may have introduced a possible bug because they've also dropped the leading zero off the 0 0.7, so it should actually be that, and 0 0.8. I'm citing this bug that they've got on there to please add the option of keeping leading zeros in paths because it messes around with Android Studio. But they could have taken it a bit further and got rid of that standalone bit. And since we only got one object, which I'm doing a fill against, I could have just put the fill there, uh, remove that group in its entirety. Yep, get rid of that end of the group as well. Get rid of the group closure tag. So yeah, it is possible to make a minified image even smaller. I've taken a look at another image. Well, this one I've actually run through a minifying service before, but there are still efficiencies we can make. As I said, we don't need metadata. And we can also get rid of oh, some of this other stuff, Creative Commons, this XML, MNS, DC, well, about the clickable elements, RDF syntax, I don't need any of that. So I just need to keep it behind the XML, MS for w3.org 2000 SVG. So let's see how that bit of efficiency is done. Oh. Looks the same and we're down to 540 bytes already. But in this case, we have a transform translate item here. So that's the difference we're gonna to make to X and Y coordinates. So that is gonna minus 293.82 off the Y coordinate. And what you'll notice there that that happens to actually equal what all those Y coordinates there are. So that's pretty pointless. So I'm saying put the vector point at 293.82, oh, by the way, minus 293.82 off of it. Well, guess what? They equal zero, so get rid of it. So I'm gonna get rid of that translate, put those all to zero. I'm going to get rid of that group as it is no longer required. Get rid of the closure tag as well. So I'm gonna save this just so you can see the immediate changes that it makes, and it's done nothing to it, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to still look the same. But there is also an assumption that can be made with the X and Y coordinates, in that you don't need to actually declare zero as a coordinate. It defaults to zero. So if I swap that rectangle around, it will make a bit more sense because the X coordinate is not listed there. In fact, these are all in reverse, aren't they? I don't know what's happened with this image. Okay, they're all reversed. So I'm gonna get rid of Y's that equal zero. I've done that. Now again, I'll save it and it looks the same. So those are little efficiencies that can be made there. And then I can look at this image further and go, well, look, I've got two colors that are the same here. So, now I could group those together and give the group the same fill value. Grouping is a feature in Inkscape where I could actually link these two elements together so that they would stay a similar distance apart. So I could actually move them both in one go. So I can highlight them both here, press Control Shift and click on them and then go to Object and Group or Control and G for a shortcut. So picking up and moving one element also moves the other. But one feature of grouping is you can actually declare the same fill value between the two items. Now I know they're different here, but if I press Control, Shift and F, I 
can change the fill value to be the same. I can set the fill value of them both at once and that can save a few characters in the file. Now you can do that with G and I'll just go and copy and paste that across then close the element tag and get rid of that fill here as well. Uh, but now I need to close the G tag, otherwise I'd be messing around with the last rectangle. So just do slash G there. And again, save it, and it looks the same. Now obviously there are further improvements which can be derived with the precision of the coordinates there, but what I actually ended up doing was redrawing the image and using a slightly different scale, so I didn't have to use quite so many precision points. And what you can also do with HTML colors is you can abbreviate them. So you can see the values of red, green, and blue can be represented via hexadecimals. That is red, green, blue. Now what you can do is reduce that in size when all the colors are the same. So that will compress down to three sevens. And they don't all have to be the same. You could do zero A zero, which would be zero zero A A zero zero. So I've saved that and you can see the color of that rectangle is now green and as I said that is 00AA00. So those are some ways you can minify scaled vector graphics images. So you can reduce the precision and you can be more intelligent on the grouping. Get rid of any unnecessary transforms and use alternate shapes such as circles instead of ellipses when you are actually drawing a circle. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.